Welcome to the 15th election in American history. It occurred in 1844 from November 1st up to December 4th. Incumbent 9th President William Henry Harrison tragically died early on from a cold but mostly due to the poor medicine of that era. This came as a major shock to everyone and to DC. It created a constitutional crisis since the constitution was vague on what would happen in this scenario. After much heated debate, a majority agreed and John Tyler became the 10th president in American history. By Tyler being sworn in, it set the rule of VP succeeding presidents but sadly for the Whig leaders like Henry Clay and Daniel Webster, they would hate Tyler. And because he was a former Democrat, he would veto all big Whig legislation. Most of his cabinet would resign. The most gut-wrenching moment was when he vetoed the revival of the National Bank, something Whigs had dreamed of for years. This was such a big deal to them, it caused many Whigs to protest outside of the White House. And soon after, the Whigs kicked out John Tyler, the president, out of their party. Meanwhile, the Webster-Ashburton Treaty was signed in 1842 and it resolved the border dispute between America and Britain which had caused the Pork and Beans War. As well, the Seminole War finally ended in 1842 after seven painful years. After the Arms Occupation Act was signed which made it easier for new people to settle Native American land. During this time, Joseph Smith and the Mormon movement was slowly growing. Smith, their leader, decided to run in 1844 from his homestead in Illinois since he felt that neither party appreciated the Mormon community. After he wrote to many political figures and got no response back or a mediocre letter. But sadly for Smith, he would be assassinated by a mob not long after this. Meanwhile, Tyler toyed with the idea of running independently as a Democratic Republican. Tyler, who was neither a Democrat or a Whig, aligned more with the Democratic Republican President James Monroe. For the election, there were a handful of nominees for president, mainly former President Martin Van Buren, who wanted to win a non-consecutive second term, and many saw him as the most likely winner at the start of the convention. Another nominee was Louis Cass, Michigan governor and ambassador to France. Richard Mentor Johnson, Van Buren's vice president from Kentucky. John C. Calhoun from South Carolina, vice president under Quincy and Jackson. Fun fact, Quincy Adams was still working as a house rep. Lastly, James Buchanan, Pennsylvania senator and minister to Russia. While for the vice president nominees, Silas Wright was the main and leading nominee, but he declined the nomination. George Dallas, Pennsylvania senator and minister to Russia. Finally, James K. Polk, former speaker and governor from Tennessee. In the end, Democrats nominated James K. Polk for president and George Dallas as his running mate. As you can see, Polk, an underdog, became the nominee for president. This is due to the main issue in this election being the Texas question. Many wanted to annex Texas, but others did not want to in fear of causing a war with Mexico. But after Van Buren expressed his opposition to the annexation of Texas during the national convention, Jackson, an expansionist, stepped in and killed the career of Van Buren, endorsing his prodigy James K. Polk. For the Whig party, the only nominee for president was influential leader Henry Clay. This was his third time running for president after he had lost in 1824 and in 1832, while for the vice president nominees they were Theodore Freeling Heisen, senator and mayor from New Jersey, John Davis, senator and governor from Massachusetts, Millard Fillmore, House Representative from New York, and finally, John Sargent from Pennsylvania, who was Calhoun's running mate back in 1832. In the end, the Whigs nominated Henry Clay and Theodore as his running mate. Before moving on, we cannot forget to mention the Liberty Party, who nominated James G. Burney. In a major move, Tyler pulled out of the race endorsing Polk since he, like Tyler, wanted to annex Texas. Polk fully endorsed the idea of Manifest Destiny while Clay waffled on the annexation of Texas. And the winner was... James K. Polk won, becoming the 11th president in American history. Polk won in a close race with 170 electoral votes against Henry Clay, and George Dallas became the 11th vice president in American history. Henry Clay came close with 105 electoral votes. This election was by far the closest one in a while, with many swing states like New York having razor-thin margins. 
Hulk became the only president to lose both his state of birth and his state of residence, with these not being the same state, which were North Carolina and Tennessee. Many historians argue perhaps the Liberty Party spoiled the election against Clay in the North, but alas, we will never know the truth. In the Senate, the Whigs won, winning 27 out of the 52 seats, but fell short with 28 needed for a majority. For the House, the Democrats won big, winning 142 seats, 27 over the threshold. New Speaker Jones became the 16th Speaker of the House, who was a Southern Democrat from Virginia. James K. Polk took his oath of office on Tuesday, March 4th, 1845 at the East Portico of the Capitol. Jacksonian democracy had won again, and Manifest Destiny would thrive. And thus, the 15th election in American history came to an end. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video.